Hello. So in this problem, we have the following situation. We have a house over here. And the width of the house is six meters. There's another six meters over here, and another six meters over here. This height over here is three meters. And you have a roof that looks kind of like that. It's pretty kind of ugly. Anyways, and this angle over here is 45 degrees. All right, so you are going to be over here, six meters away from the wall of the house. And you want to toss uh, a ball. So it's going to go up like this, barely touch or barely miss the, uh, the roof. And then your friend is over here. And your, your friend is also six meters from the wall, the other wall. And you throw the ball. not to scale, obviously, one meter above the ground. Um, and your friend is also going to catch it at one meter. All right, so that's the situation. And you want to know what is the minimum speed that will allow the ball to clear the roof. So if this angle is 45 degrees, and we assume that the roof, the maximum height of the roof is at three meters so in the middle, which seems a reasonable assumption, then we have a triangle, three meters here, and the angle is 45 degrees. So that means that the height is also three meters. Mm, you can do the trigonometry if you don't believe me, but it is. Okay, so then the height over here is three meters. So that means that the total height is six meters, uh, but you are one meter above the ground and your friend too, or I guess the, you're gonna throw the ball one meter above. So really you want the ball to go up uh, five meters, okay? So, What is the minimum velocity that will make the ball uh, travel up five meters? And remember that the horizontal and the vertical motions are decoupled, right? So we have equations for each one of them. And we can just use um, this one, but I'm going to write it um, using y. Okay. So 
uh, y not is going to be zero, so we can forget about it. Um, but y is going to be five. The initial velocity is what we're looking for. And we know the, the acceleration. This is the initial velocity in y. This is the acceleration in y. Can also use this one. Yeah, this one is better. Sorry about that. So here, uh, we know the final velocity. It's going to be zero because it's at the, at the turning point. The initial velocity is what we're looking for. We know the acceleration is just gravity, and we know the height it is 5 meters. So we can get the initial velocity. Um, this one is zero. The acceleration is in the negative direction. And so it's negative g. Negative and negative, we can make this a positive. So we forget about it. So this is 2g y. And if we want to know the velocity, we take the square root. All right, I can put some um, some numbers in there. So units are meters square, second squared, and you take the square root, that's meters per second, which is what we're looking for. So that's always good to know. So this is square root of 98, which is equal to 9.5. Meters per second. So that is the initial. I'm going to put it over here. Initial velocity in y, and of course it's in the in the positive direction. Okay. So we also care about the horizontal component. So we want the velocity in x to be you know, just enough that in the time that it takes this ball to go up 5 meters and down, it actually goes this uh, 18 meters in the horizontal direction. So in order to do that, we do need uh, a time. So the time is going to be, now we can use this one since we have the initial velocity. So we want to know the total time. So 
both y and y initial are going to be zero, right? So it has to go up and down. So we can get rid of both. This is equal to zero. Uh, we know that this is uh, minus g. And we actually can factor factorize this equation, right? So we put the t outside, we get rid of it here and here. And this one, we can move it over here dividing. And that is still zero. So we got rid of that t. So that was useful. Uh, so now we can solve more easily for this t. Uh, we move this one over here. So it's one half of g t equals v naught. Uh, we want the time. So we divide by g, multiply times 2, right? So units, we have meters per second divided by meter per second squared. So meter second squared divided by meter second. We get seconds, which is what we want. Always a good thing. So the time is going to be uh, 2 times 9.9 .9 .9 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, and remember this is the time that it needs to go up and down, five meters. So time is 2.02 .02 seconds. So let's put it over here. Nice. So if we want the ball to travel 16 meters in 2.02 .02 seconds, the delta x is going to be 18 meters. Delta T is going to be 2.02 .02 seconds. And well, that's very close to nine. So the initial velocity in X, and this is not going to change because there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction, is uh, 8.9 meters per second. Cool, so we got a lot of stuff. Now we need to know what is the total velocity. So the total initial velocity is going to be equal to the square root, so you know the Pythagorean theorem of the initial velocity in y squared plus the initial velocity in x squared. So that is 9.9 um, .9 meters per second squared plus 8.9 meters per second squared. Square root of that. Square root of 98 plus 79 meters per second squared squared meters squared second squared. Mm. So it's 
79.2. So square root of 177 meter square second squared. And this is 13.3 meters per second. All right, so that is the, um, we have gotten the components of the initial velocity. Now we get the magnitude and it's just the 13.3 meters per second. Awesome, that's what we had been asked for part A. For part B, they ask us to calculate the angle at which you should toss the ball. So we have the components of the, of the velocity, initial velocity vector. So we have the x and the y. So if you want to know this angle, the angle here of the, the your, at which you're throwing the ball, then that is going to be so the tangent of the angle theta is the component in y divided by the component in x. So if we want to get the angle, we take the arc tangent. Um, and it's going to be equal to theta. So theta is the arc tangent of 9.9. .9. Meters per second divided by 8.9 meters per second. The units go away as it should be because the arc tangent function takes no units in its argument. So 9.9 .9 divided by 8.9, .9, and we take the arc tangent of that in degrees. So theta is equal to 48 degrees. Cool, right? Okay, I hope you learn a lot, thank you.